Well, I woke up this morning from a reoccurring dream. Boop. You can't hear that? What? Never mind. Who did a boop? You, you got a whistly boop coming out of your nose. Stop, 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 please, it's annoying. Okay. Hello, people, I'm Javi Kuwait, joined by Char Kirk. Hello. We're looking at who are the Tamil people from Kojito. Thank you, Kojito, for not only making this dope video that has been strongly recommended to us, but allowing us to react to it. Yeah. You guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to Kojito. There is a link in the description below. If you just scroll down on this video, you can click on it and give the original an upvote and give them a subscribe. Also, subscribe here, bell icon, all notifications, please. Just as a heads up, we will have the subtitles on for this video, but uh, I'll be watching it in speed mode because it is a considerably long video. It'll be just fast enough that Achar and I will be able to understand what's going on here. This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to Nebula, a video streaming service made by your favorite educational creators when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. This is South India, home to the biodiversity hotspots, the Western and Eastern Ghats, mm. the Bengal Tiger, the oh. Nilgiri Tar, the Indian Elephant, and whatever this creature is. What is Here that? It's also the cradle of Tamil culture. Today, there are about 80 million Tamils in the world. That's more than there are French, Colombians, or Kenyans. Wow. Most Tamils live in North and East Sri Lanka or in the Southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, mm. literally Tamil country. Tamil Nadu is now a state in modern India, but for thousands of years, Tamilikam, or the homeland of the Tamils, was much larger and ruled by independent kingdoms. Yeah. Tamil culture is the last surviving classical civilization because they've managed to keep their beliefs, culture, and language intact for over 2,000 years. Wow. But who are the Tamils? What is their story? And what does it have to do with $700 billion golden coconuts? What? Right, let's find out. $700 billion golden coconuts? That's what I heard. Also, apparently the Chola dynasty um, had a huge impact on Thailand. Oh, really? As well in Thai culture. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, fine. So we're like... The Tamils, maybe more than any other people, are in love with their language. Tamil writing has been dated as far back as the 6th century BCE from the archaeological site Kairadi in India and from the 2nd century BCE at Punakari in Sri Lanka, making it one of the oldest datable languages still in use. Wow. Tamils often call their language Tamartai, which means the Tamil mother. It's more important to the Tamil identity than land, race or religion. If you want to have the most intense conversation of your entire life, just go ask a Tamil person anything about the Tamil language. Tamils <sighs> also take pride in the independent origin of their language. See, you can roughly divide India linguistically in half. North Indians genuinely speak languages descended from Sanskrit, an Indo-European language. This language family stretches from North India all the way over to Iceland. Wow. South Indian languages like Tamil belong to a completely unrelated language family called Dravidian. Unlike Sanskrit, which like Latin is- Hold well, on, catch me up on that. Explain this to me real quick, this history here. Yeah. He's, he's saying it's all the way from its huge area this is not just India, or this is all India here? Yeah, yeah, so is like it, it North, other North areas India. Though, right? Yes, so he's saying that the extent of the influence of Sanskrit Right there, Indo-European languages. Yeah, it is influencing languages all the way up to Iceland. In like, it influences languages the, the in, in India and in Europe. What is influencing? Sanskrit. Oh, Sanskrit, okay, gotcha, yes. gotcha, gotcha. Sanskrit, which was created by the people who occupy India. Correct, I think. Right, because like, it wasn't always called India. Right, it, right it, was, yeah. it was initially different kingdoms. And so Sanskrit, which was originated there, influenced languages all the way that far out is what he's saying. Yeah. Okay, that's wild. Yeah. All right, so I'm just, sorry. Family stretches from North India all the way over to Iceland. South Indian languages like Tamil belong to a completely unrelated language family called Dravidian. Right. Unlike Sanskrit, which like Latin is no longer spoken, modern Tamil survives as a living language for millions of speakers. Dravidians do not like it when North India tries to push its culture or language on the South. The hmm. earliest clear evidence of Tamil people are urn burials dating from around 1000 BCE at Adich Anilor. Amazingly, they found evidence there of the worship of a god with a trident and a peacock, very like the Hindu Tamil's favourite god today, Murugan. But the Tamils really leap into world history when the Maurya Emperor Ashoka mentions the unconquerable southern Tamil kingdoms in his rock inscriptions made between 273 and 232 BCE. Which is impressive when you consider the fact that the Maurya Empire essentially conquered everything else. This is right around the beginning oh. of a Tamil golden age known as the Sangam period, lasting from the 3rd century BCE to the 3rd century CE. At this time, Tamilicum was ruled by three Tamil dynasties, the Solas, the Seras, and the Panjas. Okay. He said Sola. Not Sola, so I was wrong. I'm sorry if it's the Solas. It certainly looks like Chola. I apologize. Yeah, it does look like Chola, but he yeah. said Sola. Okay, yeah. just making sure we understand. Three Tamil dynasties, the Solas, the Seras, and the Panjas. 
Unfortunately, there were no actual pandas in the Panja Kingdom. I know, I know. The Tamil kings <laughs> were immeasurably rich and used their wealth to sponsor century-long poetry slams called the Sangams at the Panja capital, Madurai, where male and female poets would show off their works. These poets created... <laughs> did you see, the, did you yeah. see the, the poetry <laughs> slams? It was really cute. It was really cute, yeah. Poems, books, and epic stories called Sangam literature. Sangam literature is unique in how it doesn't seem to belong to any single class or religion. It was written by and concerns Hindus, Jains, men, women, farmers, kings, pandas, non-pandas, <laughs> and everyone in between. One great Sangam poet, Poon Poon Krenar, emphasized the equality of all humans, saying, I am a citizen of the world, and everyone in the world is related to me. This was followed by one of India's most beloved presidents, the Tamil Muslim aerospace scientist Abdul Kalam at the European Parliament in 2007. The Sangam literature tells us about a rich, cosmopolitan and multi-ethnic Tamil-speaking society 2,000 years ago, where Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all coexisted peacefully, where kings would even invite priests to public debates on their beliefs. Sangam poems hmm. describe Madurai as so rich that it had a moat with secret underground passages large enough for elephants. Wow. The mercenaries guarded its gates and the scent of perfume could be smelled miles away from the city. Where there were folks of every race buying and selling in the bazaars or singing to the music of wandering bands. So how were the Tamils so rich? They were spicy. The ancient <laughs> world was yeah. a bland, flavourless, yes. unseasoned mess. It tasted a lot like English food. Yes. This was until the Tamils taught everyone the way of the spice. A first century CE Greek manual for sailors, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, says that the Tamils exported pepper and other spices, along with diamonds, woven textiles, pearls, ivory, malabatrum, and other luxury items. What's malabatrum? Yeah. Who cares? It sounds luxurious though. Another <laughs> major export was cotton and silk clothing woven by women. Indian women would dominate this global trade for the next 2,000 years. Wow. Tamils traded so much that Pliny the Elder said India takes 100 million sesterces from our empire per year at a conservative estimate. That's about wow. 10 tons of gold. China had the Silk Road. The Tamils had the flavor highway? The spice route? The spice boulevard. <laughs> Whatever. They made themselves the center of a global trade network that linked Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and China. Wow. We've discovered massive hordes of Chinese, Iranian, and Roman coins along the ancient Tamil coast. Wow. And the inscriptions have been found as far apart as Egypt and Thailand. A statue of the Hindu goddess Lakshmi got buried at Pompeii, and Tamil ambassadors wow. met with Augustus Caesar in 20 CE. This trade made Tamil cooking the first international cuisine in the world. The word orange comes from the Tamil naram, ginger comes from Tamil injiver, and rice in loads of European languages comes from the Tamil arisi. Without the Tamil, huh. Ireland's greatest contribution to world cuisine, the spice bag, would not exist. And honestly, I don't want to live in that kind of world. What's so funny? <laughs> it's just like how he brings it back to like this random Irish dis dish called the spice bag. A spice bag is a fast food dish popular in Ireland inspired by Asian cuisine. Typically, a spice bag consists of deep fried salt and chili chips, chicken, red and green peppers, sliced chili peppers, fried onions, and a variety of spices. A vegetarian or vegan option is often available in which deep fried tofu takes the place of shredded chicken. It is sometimes accompanied by a tub of curry sauce available in Chinese takeaways and chippers since 2010s. Wow. Uh, the dish was uh has developed something of a cult following it was voted ireland's favorite takeaway dish in two, in 2020. one roman cookbook had over 300 recipes using indian spices from ostrich curry to tasty peppered brain sausage wow but everyone's favorite another laxative <laughs> link to the cookbook is in the description in case you need a laxative tamils got so in case you need a laxative the trade routes that just one temple the patmana pasvami temple whose vaults were recently opened has a treasure worth over 700 billion dollars this wow. was accumulated over thousands of years from the donations from Tamil dynasties like the Seras, the Panjas, the Palavas, and the Solas. Some of the things in the temple include this golden Mahavishnu statue, tens of thousands of gold coins, a solid gold throne, golden elephants, a five meter long diamond necklace, what? and my personal favorite, a 30 kilogram solid gold coconut. Okay. At what point does that stop being a coconut and start being a bowling ball? <sighs> there are still unopened vaults in this temple, so we're still unsure of how much it's worth. Tamil merchants, monks, and craftspeople worked across Southeast Asia and lived in small communities there. Tamil merchants didn't just trade pepper with Southeast Asia. They traded the spiciest thing of all. Ideas. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. What do you think about that temple? That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. I just hope that with all of the treasures there that it is heavily guarded. Oh, like, no, I, had, I had a completely different thought. Let's just be real. Like if you have a lot of people that don't have access to everything they need in modern society, why not 
I don't know. I maybe I'm sure, thinking yeah, in no, a bad I, way, but like it's like being broke, but you've got this penny in your pocket that's worth 130 grand. Well, why wouldn't you sell off that penny to take care of yourself? You know, I get it. I get what you're saying, but also that is part of culture and heritage and history, and so right. it's like do you, a, it's a tough yeah. yeah. Do you sell it off and you know get the money and, and help people now, or do you preserve it? for future generations to enjoy. I guess I'm a pragmatist. To me, I'd sell it off. I know, I know would, that's yeah. offensive to some people, but I would sell it off and take care of the people if that can actually happen. Because you know, there's so much red tape in the way of distributing funds, distributing food, distributing vaccines, as it were. Yeah. You know, like there's, there's a lot of red tape in the way that makes things complicated. But if there's a way to trade that in for a copious amounts of money to then distribute to people to help elevate their livelihood and or just their lives in general and keep people fed, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if there's an argument to be made about keeping the history, like preserving history in order to boost morale. Does that help people in any way to feel like special because there are these relics of the ancient culture that, you know, people are really proud of. And obviously the Tamil people have their Tamil language. Here, look at it this way. Look at it this way. history goes back so look, far. Look at it this way. Let's say you've got a baby, right? And you have this heirloom that you've had in your family for generations and this heirloom is worth if you trade it in a hundred thousand dollars but you have this baby who's starving yeah of course i would sell it okay that's yeah. that's my thinking too and that's how i look at it. it's like that's an heirloom though it's like you want to keep that forever but it's like you have this kid that you're trying to feed. you have a family you're trying to take care of as an american with my american sensibilities that's crazy to me because i know that there are people in india who are struggling right but is that is, is that, that wrong to say no 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 that isn't wrong to say but i'm just wondering is that because there is no money or because it's not being distributed i don't know maybe it has something to do with infrastructure that yeah. is just not being engineered or implemented i know that india is changing i know that india is getting better every single day it's like it's making crazy advances yeah i get that in the meanwhile in the interim you still have a lot of people that aren't living, you know, the best possible life that they sure, can. Sure, no, I, I get it. From the 4th century CE on, kingdoms from Thailand to Vietnam to Indonesia were ruled by Hindu kings and wrote using Tamil writing. Wow. Tamil Khmer, Javanese and Thai scripts all descend from the Tamil Pallava script. Wow. The monument to this cultural exchange is the originally Hindu temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia. I want to go. The religious structure on earth. By the end of the 13th century, we even find the Tamil Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva all the way over in the Chinese part of Qingzhou, wow. where a small Tamil community lived. The wealth and fame of the Tamil lands invited more than just merchants. A small Jewish community could be found in Kochi from the 6th century BCE. Wow. More even came as refugees after the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE. And according oh. to the local tradition, the Jews were followed by St. Thomas, the Apostle of Jesus, who landed in India in 52 CE and started converting people to Christianity. From Thomas, India's current Syrian Christian community claims descent. In 629 CE, a mosque was built by Muslim merchants in Muziris. And you can still go visit it today, or a part of it at least, because the Portuguese blew it up in 1504, but like, it's still cool. You can still see some of it. Okay, so we're going to do a little time jump here. Let's see, invaded by Buddhist warrior tribes, Jainism and Buddhism take over for a bit, rise of the Pallava dynasty, Hindu revival, ah, here it is. After the Sangha period, the next great Tamil golden age happened under the Sola dynasty, between the 9th and 13th centuries. Their greatest king, Raja Raja Sola, rose to the throne in 985 CE. He and his son quickly turned his modest kingdom into an empire that conquered most of South India, wow. Sri Lanka, and the Maldives. The Sola used their massive navy, the largest in Asia at the time, to control the trade routes between Southeast Asia and China. When the Srivijaya Empire threatened to block Sola access to the Straits of Malacca, the Solas launched massive naval attacks across Indonesia and Malaysia, and even kidnapped the Srivijaya king. And no one ever messed with their trade routes ever again. Okay. Along with an army containing 60,000 war elephants, the Sola King's personal guard included the Paddy Muglir, or women bodyguards trained in Tamil martial arts and weapons. Wow. There are also mentions of women working as advisors and ambassadors, and using their own money to make large donations to temples. Raja Raja Sola amazing. poured his enormous wealth into building massive temples in a style called Dravidian architecture. The most well-known of these being the Raja Raja Jaiswara Temple in Tanjavur. This 66 meter tall Soren monument to Raja Raja was one of the tallest buildings in the world at the time. 44 Danny DeVitos. I wonder about the Tamil influence on whatever Mexico was before it was Mexico, you know, Aztecian or whatever like that. Because the- It does look similar. Yeah, I mean, as a person who's completely ignorant on this stuff, it looks wildly similar to me. Time. 
other than Raja Raja Temple, other Sola slash Davidian architecture is also breathtaking. Like the yeah. Iyarathiswara Temple, the Kanchi wow. Kanta Sola Puram Temple, and the Champa Suvarara Temple. Sola temples also acted as banks. These temples received massive donations from the royals, and then they offered loans from those donations to farmers, villages, and merchants. Wow. Sola temples became this weird vehicle for redistributing wealth and reinvesting it in arts and local communities, making everyone richer. Oh, that's great. Ah. I wonder why when Marco Polo came here in 1273, he called the Sola lands the richest province on earth. Sola power declined in the 12th and 13th centuries. Buddhism and Islam replaced Hinduism in Southeast Asia, and Tamil lands in Kerala drifted away and developed their own language and culture, which resulted in the modern Malayalam language. I wonder what influ influenced, because we were talking about it just a second ago, I wonder what influenced that whole system of the wealthy people just donating money to this bank system thing is it because it's, well, no, the, temple? it's the temple so right they're just giving to the so, temple yeah i mean i would imagine and i'm sure you guys it's can like a correct thing. me in the chat but yeah it's like you give to the temple in order to create good karma or you I know see. just to get into heaven or something it's like a guarantee for you and your family right if you have the funds you give it to the temple and then it's interesting to me that they said loans i don't know if there's like a oh you have to return it back to the temple or maybe it's just that they give it or if it is a loan then maybe it's like no interest or something well you know yeah i mean, mean? but like, you're I still imagine you're still creating purchasing power for someone who initially didn't have it yeah and that's really really great and, that, and that, that totally makes sense as to why you know the whole empire was so rich because yeah they were redistributing the wealth and just making it available for everyone which yeah. is really great buddhism and islam it's replaced hinduism in southeast asia and tamil lands in kerala drifted away and developed their own language and culture which resulted in the modern malayalam language okay so we're going to need to do another time jump you have muslim invasions from the north rise of the Vijayanagarap, who build the world's second largest city arrival of the portuguese destruction of the Vijayanagarap by muslim armies tamil lands fracture into small states and ah here it is no no, no, it can't be. Not you. Not you again. Who? Tally her, it is a smashing civilization you've got there. It would be a shame if someone were to plunder it. Tamilicum was oh split God. into small, competing states in the 17th century, which made it easier for the newly arriving European powers to invade. By the end of the 18th century, most of South India was under British rule. The Tamils resisted the British invasion. One example is that of the Queen of Shivaganga, Velu Nachiar. Huh? To protect her kingdom from invasion, she built an army to resist the British imperialists. This army included a regiment of women soldiers. One of them, Kulili, volunteered to destroy a vital British ammunition depot that was located inside a temple. Kulili and her fellow warriors easily entered the temple as worshippers because the British taught women were harmless. Mm. Unable to sneak weapons in, they poured oil over Kulili, <gasps> who then set herself on fire and leapt into the ammunition depot. Oh but my all god! Up, a securing victory for her queen in the following battles. Oh my god, Becoming I got chills. the first woman martyr in India's long battle for freedom. Despite wow. after this, by 1858, Jeez. the British crown had seized control of all of India. Famine quickly swept South India between 1876 and 1878, killing 8 million people. With the area devastated by famine, the British could dismantle the over 2,000 year old Tamil textile industry. As British textile manufacturers couldn't compete with Tamil textiles, so they destroyed all the Indian looms. Then they pushed Tamils out of work as craftspeople and onto tea, sugar, coffee and opium plantations in India or sent them off across their empire as indentured servants. Oh my god, that's so sad. Ugh. That's awful. That's, yeah. That's super messed up. It's like, yep, let's just come in and like destroy your way of life. Yeah. Yeah. And like make you do something else. It's gross. I'm sorry. John Sullivan, a colonial official in southern India, said under their own dynasties, all the revenue that was collected in the country was spent in the country. Our system acts very much like a sponge, drawing up all the good things from the banks of the Ganges and squeezing them out on the banks of the Thames. India would eventually win its independence from Britain in 1947. What are the Thames? The Thames. The Thames, what is that? It's a river running through London. So it's basically saying we're taking up all the good things from the Ganges, which yeah, is like no. the main river in India, and then like taking it and putting it in this big river in England. In the first two decades of Indian independence, language became a battlefield in India. In 1950, Hindi, the most spoken language in India, was selected as the sole official language of the country, with 1965 picked as the year the changeover from English would happen. Speakers of the Dravidian languages in the south didn't like Hindi because it was Sanskrit-based, which they considered more alien than English. 
1965 wow. approached, thousands of Tamil student protesters shouted, Hindi never, English ever, in the streets of Seni. Four students set themselves on fire as a symbol of non-violent protest. Wow. The Indian political parties made it clear that if Hindi became the official language of India, then Tamil Nadu would secede from India. The protesters won. The Official Languages Act Amendment of 1967 ensured the continued use of English alongside Hindi as the official language of India up until today. Huh. Even now in India, Tamil Nadu is famous for its independent streak, love of its culture and language, and for acting as the champion of Dravidian politics against the North. But Tamils don't only live in Tamil Nadu. Just a few kilometers away from there is the island nation known today as Sri Lanka, where Tamils make up 15% of the population. Sri Lanka is home to several ethnic groups. The mostly Buddhist Sinhalese are the majority, and the mostly Hindu Tamils are the second largest group. Both groups have been on the island for over 2,000 years. This island was known as Ceylon when it suffered three centuries of colonialism under Portugal, the Netherlands, and then their British Empire took over in 1796. Mm. When the British arrived, they were like, how can I make everything worse? Oh, let's introduce inter-ethnic conflict. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, to spur hatred, the British chose Tamils for higher positions than the Sinhalese in the government. What? Then in the Sri Lankan highlands, Sinhalese lands were seized by the British and enslaved Tamils from India who were settled there as plantation workers. These are Indian Tamils, distinct from the Sri Lankan Tamils who have lived in Sri Lanka for much, much longer. Sri Lankan Tamils live in the north and east, Indian Tamils live in the central highlands, and the Sinhalese live essentially everywhere else. When the British got kicked out of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in 1948, the majority of Sinhalese took control of the island. Sinhalese nationalism exploded, and soon anti-Tamil massacres swept the island in wow. 1956, 1958, and 1977, which led to the formation of a guerrilla fighting group known as the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, better mm -hmm. known as the Tamil Tigers. On the 31st of May 1981, the Sri Lankan police burned the Jaffna Public Library to the ground, home to 97,000 books and containing irreplaceable artifacts of Tamil history. That's terrible. Yeah, that's that terrible. happens so much throughout history, like people burning books and well and the library of culture. alexandria was the most famous one yeah that you know it's just like it's just like okay we'll just we'll just burn your history then and we'll just burn the and none of this conflict would have happened if the english didn't invade most Pretty, likely it sounds it sounds like that because it, i just find that so gross that the british would do that and just be like okay well we'll just create conflict by you know basically creating this manufactured class war based on ethnicity that's happened a lot yeah, I mean, it's it's messed up. That happened. That happened just before, like, in the century of the Civil War. Like, that's what happened essentially. Is that it seems the, like the, that's a tactic that they used. Yeah, a it's lot. A, it was a tactic used by the wealthy. They essentially manufactured racism in that area because they were trying to sell on the to the white people, the poor white people. They're trying to sell to them, you're better than the black people because they're occupied with this nonsensical argument. The people in charge, the top one percent, were able to stay the top one percent. Yeah, selling them. A bill of goods selling them this idea that oh someday you could own slaves someday you could be as wealthy as us even though that was just not the case a, a pipe dream seeing the fire one tamil refugee said it was as if my entire biography my history and the history of the tamils had been destroyed wiped from the face of the earth as if we did not exist on july 23rd 1983 the tamil tigers ambushed and killed 15 sri lankan soldiers causing another anti-tamil massacre to sweep the country in an event known as black july the sri lankan civil war had begun Oh God. The Tamil Tigers were fighting for an independent Tamil nation in the Tamil parts of the island. As the war dragged on over decades, the Tamils became infamous for inventing the explosive <laughs> vest and for carrying out a <laughs> bombing campaign across Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan army retaliated with brutal attacks against the Tamil Tigers, which mostly resulted in the deaths and displacement of tens of thousands of innocent Tamil civilians. The Sri Lankan state is still undergoing investigations for committing a against the Tamils. This bloody war dragged on for 26 years, until the 18th of May 2009, when the leader of the Tamil Tigers, V. Pirapakaran, was killed and the Tigers surrendered. The war took the lives of over 100,000 people, with 40,000 Tamil civilians being killed in the oh final few months of the war. These are rough estimates because a proper investigation hasn't been done. The war caused a mass exodus of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees to India, Australia, Europe and North America. Today, around 8 million Tamils live outside of India and Sri Lanka. From the 19th century onwards, they went as indentured labourers across the British Empire, especially to Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Fiji, Mauritius and the yeah. Caribbean, where many have kept their Tamil identities. Tamil is actually an official language in Singapore and Malaysia. Well, I think now it's time to take a look at Tamil culture. Religion. Today- Hold on, I just need a moment to breathe. That's brutal. Yeah. Um, God. Ugh. That's rough, man. <sighs> 
That's rough. Fucking Brits. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I feel bad. But, you know, like... Well, it's not like you did it. No, I know, but it's also, you know, it's it's part of my... Well, you can you, you can ask guess, the you can ask the question of how can I create less conflict in the world? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, how can I make people's lives better? Yeah, because goddamn. Yeah, it was it was like pretty evil. Yeah, there's no. It's other, ruthless. Yeah, there's no other way to put it. Like it's just awful. I have to ask, like, if it's at all possible that some of these people didn't realize the impact that they were gonna have, the devastation that they were going to inflict by doing what they did. But it was like written in plain text there, you know, formerly this wealth was contained in this land, but now it's gonna come to us instead. Like it's in plain text, like you were robbing these people. Yeah. You can't even claim ignorance, like you were thieving. That's what colonizers did. They came to a country and- Sorry, they did it here too, so. Yeah, and it's so funny, like reading the thing that my friend uh, shared on Twitter, like she she reposted it. No, it wasn't Twitter, it was Instagram, whatever. But she reposted it off of someone else's account because it was recently uh, 4th of July here. And she's like, great, today's the day that the- oh, Yeah, the, the original person who said what you're about to say is me, Khalifa though. So it's like, yeah, today's the day the colonizers celebrate liberation from their colonizers or something, I, I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah, there's a huge history of you know colonialism in the US as well. And it, it's just that, it's coming to a country and plundering their wealth and resources and bringing it back to your own country and not really caring about the people that you're taking it from. About 88% of the Tamil population of Tamil Nadu are Hindus, 6% are Christians, 5.8% are Muslims, and Jains, Buddhists and Sikhs make up the rest. The most important Tamil festival is Thai Pongal, a harvest festival dedicated to the Hindu sun god Surya that usually occurs on the 14th of January. This festival is celebrated by all Tamils regardless of religion though. Pongal means to boil or overflow and refers to the traditional dish of new harvest rice boiled in milk with raw sugar. Pongal celebrations include decorating cows, ritual bathing, parades, prayers, dances, creating art and getting together with friends and family and exchanging gifts. During Pongal in Tamil Nadu, you might also see a jali kutta in this over 2,000 year old oh, the movie. an Indian bull mm-hmm. is released into a crowd of people and men attempt to grab the hump on the bull's back with both arms and hang onto it for as long as possible, Ooh. attempting to bring the bull to a full stop, thus taming the bull. Oh, God. See, like there's gotta be some kind of Tamil influence in in the Mexico or Spain. That's Spain, yeah. That they don't do that in Mexico. That's correct. I'm revealing my ignorance. <laughs> yes, they do it in Spain, right. yeah. Still. Yeah, maybe. There's gotta be some kind of influence. Maybe, yeah. That's, sorry. That's entirely possible. Yeah. They do so, they get a prize. If no one tames the bull, the owner of the bull gets a prize. Ah! There have been many attempts to ban this sport in recent years, which has caused massive popular backlash. Another- it's interesting to me that in um, Zamine- Zamilegi no Dubara, what's it Zindagi called? Zindagi Na. Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara. Yes. Zindagi Na Milegi, what? Milagi Dobara. Milagi Dobara. It's interesting that they went all the way to Spain when they got this. Could it just come here? Yeah. Done the Jalika too. I mean, at least for the ending. <laughs> Sorry for those of you who haven't seen it. In recent years, which has caused massive popular backlash. Another interesting Tamil holiday is a May festival, the god Aravan, who is worshipped by transgender people called Tevrunar in Tamil. At oh, wow. the festival at Kovakam, you'll see ceremonial marriages between festival goers and the god Aravan, along with beauty pageants and dances hosted with the support of the Tamil Nadu government. In 2008, Tamil Nadu became the first state in India to allow people to legally identify as a third gender. Arts. Oh, awesome. Tanj- wow. That is extremely progressive. Yeah. I mean, they have a whole celebration for it. Yeah. Well, so many cultures celebrate the third gender. Even here in Native American cultures, people who identify as both or Mm -hmm. who are trans, they're celebrated as being special. Jibur paintings and solar bronzes are some of the Tamil's greatest contributions to world art. But one of the more humble yet distinct features of Tamil art is the kolam, which decorates the front of almost every Tamil home. These are geometrical and floral designs made of rice flour. Each day the kolam is crafted by women and then erased the next morning to make room for a new one. Today, in Tamil Nadu, huts to five-star hotels will all have a kolam. One of the most treasured pieces of Tamil literature is the Tirukural by Tiruvulavar, which has its origins in the Sangam period but was finalized a few centuries after. This is a masterpiece in ethics and living well. The Tirukural is made up of three books of wise sayings on virtue, wealth and love, all delivered in quick two-line poems. For example, the greatest virtue of all is non-killing, truthfulness cometh only next. It also just stops midway and talks about how to build good forts and I'm always down for some fort talk. 
Charity and kindness are Hold on, I missed it. And I'm always down. Height, breath, strength, difficult access, science declares a, f a fort must these possess. Cute. <laughs> a fort must need but slight defense, yet ample be defying all the foeman's energy. Impregnable, containing ample stores of food, a fort for those within must be a warlike station good. Interesting. It kind of reminds me of um, Art of War a little bit. Charity and kindness are also key aspects and it emphasizes non-violence and vegetarianism. Avoidance of killing and eating the meat of even one animal is more meritorious than a thousand sacrifices. The Tirukuru is vital to Tamil culture. It pops up in songs, films and books. Every bus in Tamil Nadu is legally obligated to have a verse from the Tirukurul on it. Oh wow. One of the Tamil's most famous dances is Parathanateum. This dance tells a story through complicated mudras or hand gestures, facial expressions and body posture. It also just looks incredible. Is this the one with the amazing eye movements? I remember seeing this as a kid and just being like, what? Food. Rice is the staple of the mostly vegetarian Tamil diet. Bananas and plantains, jackfruit, coconut, lentils, tamarind and mango are also commonly used ingredients. What did we eat? Dosa. Yeah, it was, it was yummy. It was so yummy. Yeah, we didn't we didn't film it for you guys. Sorry, it was we'll do it so again. So yummy. I want that. Can we have that today? Is that possible? Is there something nearby? No. Like, oh god, it was so delicious. Maybe if we drive. I have to order two though, because I just like went right through. Yeah, it. he ate an entire dosa and then tried to eat mine, and I was like, hands off, dude. It's mine. Jackfruit, coconut, lentils, tamarind, and mango are also commonly used ingredients, along with a huge amount of spices. Mm. Traditionally, a Tamil meal is eaten off of a banana leaf. Some favorite Tamil foods include the light and fluffy idli, the fried and spicy vadai, mm. the crispy dosa, and the delicious fried banana banda. Another oh. Tamil dish is complete without a side of sambar, chutney, orange There's Sri Lanka, gotta be something nearby sambar. that we can eat. Tamils also love their coffee, which they brew in this unique South Indian device. Mm. Cinema. Ooh. Tamil people oh, yeah. are passionate about cinema. Based in the Kodobakum neighborhood in Senna, the Tamil film industry, or Kollywood, is the second largest film industry in India. Mani Ratnam's gangster epic, Nayakam, was included in Time Magazine's 100 Best Movies of All wow. Time. Wow. I actually watched a movie with one of Tamil cinema's superstars, Rajinikant, where this happens, and it was an absolutely amazing few hours. <laughs> Tamil cinema has even bled into Tamil politics. Three chief ministers of the Tamil Nadu state have risen out of Tamil cinema. Tamil cinema acts as a way for Tamils to preserve their independent and original culture by producing films in the Tamil language based on Tamil ideas and culture. I really thought this video was wonderful. It was thorough. Yeah, and really, really well I, I done. I think it deserves way more views. I think Kogito deserves way more subscribers than he's getting. Kogito. Kogito he just sorry. said his name. I'm sorry. I like saying Kogito. First off, I, my, one of my favorite bits is when he shows himself looking at the book with the glasses and all that stuff. It's just like really cute animation. It's yeah, like, the animation is, is really, really cute. And I, I love how he kind of imbues all of this knowledge and learning with a sense of humor. And so it just makes it really fun. It makes it more accessible. Yeah. But even with that, like he was talking about some serious stuff and yeah. he didn't shy away from the facts. You know, he, he went deep down into it and, you know, put it out there. Uh, yeah, because I mean, you're talking about who are the Tamil people and it would be a disservice to just not include what happened in Sri Lanka, right? Well, it would be very easy to give into the temptation of just making a list of, oh, why this was about the Tamil people are great. As yeah. opposed to like thoroughly breaking it down like this. These kinds of videos though, admittedly, I would need to watch more than once to fully absorb all the information. It has nothing to do with the speed at which I'm watching it. I'd have to watch this multiple times to like really absorb well, all the data. Well, it's a lot of information. I mean, but like the main takeaway that I got from this is uh, the Tamil language, which we already knew. Like, you know, we watched another video about how important the Tamil language is to the people and the culture. But also what was amazing to me was the role of women in Tamil Nadu and like just how women were warriors, women were able to, you know, have money and things. It's very anti-English. It's very anti-English and yeah. anti-patriarchy which like I don't know I mean I guess I'm kind of going a bit new age here but you know a lot of the values that we hold strong now come from that belief of the patriarchy which is like oh you know it has to be this way and we've been trained to to think like oh you know women didn't have rights and stuff and then over here it's like uh <laughs> actually Women were doing really well for themselves and you know, they were able to be warriors and earn money and and, yeah. and, and the women were an essential part of making fabric, which was a huge part of trade, you know, in Tamil Nadu. And, and so it's like, okay, wow, you guys have been doing this forever. And then here come the 
the well, Europeans I mean, with that, the patriarchy that, and, and going like, oh no, <laughs> women are just this like mild, meeker, weaker, dumber sex. Right. Well, I mean, that's the revelation you're having with this is like how I was what I had with film and yeah, Indian cinema. Exactly. It's just like, hold on. Over here, we're bickering about wanting to put women at the forefront. It's like over there in India, they've just been doing it. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, not it's not deal. even a big deal. It's not even yeah. a thought. It's like, you just do it. Like, why are we even talking about this? You just do it. Exactly. It's so interesting to me. Again, this is a thorough breakdown of the video uh, of, of the, the of the history. And I thought that was really cool. I almost wish that he'd make this into a multi-part series as opposed to just one video. Because like there were parts that he just brushed past. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, he must have his reasons for brushing past it. But I don't know those reasons. He didn't state why he didn't go into it. And I think that it's such a rich history. I wish 2, more people. Two thousand years. I wish more people were watching this video to give him justification for like revisiting this or going deeper or making like a special version of it, mm -hmm. so that he can go back and like really break down the stitch points mm -hmm. between like basically all the parts that he skipped of like getting a better understanding of all that. Right. I mean, I, I imagine that the reason why he skipped it was because it wasn't like the most important parts of the history. Yeah, but it's still you know interesting. I mean? But it's, yeah, it's it is still it is still interesting. And and for me personally, I would love to explore more of, you know, how it's global impact? Yeah, the global impact, but also just the impact on Thailand. Well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's I mean Thailand's included. It's part of the globe. Yeah. No, I know that. But like for me personally, but right. being someone who's from Thailand and then like I remember when we watched some of the tourist videos from South India, the culture and the architecture and everything is so similar. And obviously I know that there is that link with the Sola or Chola dynasty. Well, he might be, it might be his accent, but yeah. Like, I just think that's so cool. I would, know? I would love to know if he has the information, obviously I can just look it up on Wikipedia, but he makes these like cute animations that are easy to digest. I would love to know the impact of the architecture on architectures for other cultures. Like we talked about the Aztecian culture. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I it, That would be interesting, but it seems like the Americas were kind of not really on that trade route. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it again, but it is interesting just this kind of... It looks so similar, though. It does look similar, but I think that as ancient peoples, building very tall structures was something that was akin to, like, touching the gods, right? Because if the gods are up there, then building this amazingly tall structure is just kind of awe-inspiring and speaks to... But you don't see that in other cultures, though. Like, What about ancient Egypt? The design is what I'm talking about. I don't know. Maybe I'm ig it's I'm speaking from total ignorance and I'm remembering it wrong. But the specific style looks very similar to what I remember from Aztec culture. And it's not, I don't see that coming up in like Italian culture or, you know, Chinese or Japanese culture. It's like that they had their own style, which was probably largely informed by, informed by Mongolian or Chinese ancestry or something like that. Or, you know, the, the culture rather. It seems so oddly specific that it would be weird if it, were, if it was just like, it just so happened that these two completely different cultures design similar things, but I guess that does happen through history where you have... Like, it's almost like a collective consciousness co like, yeah, but like they talk I, about in, I, in Jungian exactly. uh, psychology. Yeah, they exactly. I think a lot of different cultures have a similar idea of what the boogeyman looks like. Right. Even though like these cultures have never spoken to each other uh -huh. at that time. Yeah. So it could be something like that. It could that. be either way. It would be yeah. interesting to know for sure. But uh, anyway, in summary, uh, I really, really enjoyed this video and I, I look forward to watching more Kogito. I love saying Kogito though because it sounds cute. Kogito videos. And I know that he was sort of taking shots at himself about the animation. I think the animation's great. Yeah, uh, it's cute. It just makes it accessible. And I, I hope that people aren't offended by it for any reason. It's just densely packed. Even though there was a lot of information here, there was a few key takeaways for me that I'm glad I got out of this. Yeah. You know? So. And like learning more about, you know, the, the impact of Britain on, you know, India. And the history. It's just gross. But yeah, you know, it's like it's important to know. Just as a counterpoint, I've... I forget where I read it, but there were some Indians who have commented saying, you know, before the British came, India was very divided. Sure. It was just different places, like all these different little kingdoms and Britain sort of... United. United it all. And there's an argument to be made for like, you know, the railways and infrastructure and stuff like that. But it's, there's no doubt that some awful, awful things were done to Indians I mean, by the Brits. I guess you can say they did a great thing and a terrible thing at the same time. Sure, yeah. And it's just unfortunate that it didn't favor the greatness, it favored the terrible. Or it's 50-50. 
I, I don't know. I don't know the percentage. Uh, who knows? One of the more fascinating parts of this video before we close this out to me was the language thing because there was a whole pushback against Hindi because it was originally Sanskrit, right? Or formed from Sanskrit or something like that? Yeah, so it's it's a Sanskrit-based so, language uh, rather than Dravidian. It's interesting to me that they would rather have English alongside their own language than Hindi. Well, I think it's because everyone was already speaking English. And then all of a sudden it's like, this is government law or rule to be like, now the official language is Hindi. Yeah, and they're like, that, that just makes us feel more alienated. Right, but I can understand I can understand the intent. It was an effort to unite the country. I don't know if they were saying you can't speak your language anymore. It seemed like they were trying to have a unified language so everyone could communicate with each other yeah, yeah. to avoid being plundered again by a foreign body of some kind. Well, I, I don't think it's just that as well, but it's just so that there's a common language for, you know, laws and- Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. all of that. I, yeah. I mean all of that, yeah, you know? Yeah. It's just uniting everybody. And so it's interesting to me that they would favor the colonizer's language yeah over your brother's language. But that's the language of your, isn't it? Like I'm so- But then I don't know, it, it, I mean, it seems to me that even now there's this great like north and south divide in India. Well, there's and certainly so, a little bit of a silent bickering about, well, with yeah. the language, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, not just with the language, with the cinema, with, you know, with so many things, with the culture and all that, it seems quite different. And therefore, trying to force the language from the North on the people from the South might make people in the South feel even more alienated, mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, so now we have to learn this other language which we don't even want to learn. Like, everyone speaks English. Like, we've all had to learn English. Why can't we just continue to use that and then have our, our language to preserve our culture on the side? Like, there's so many languages in India, right? But, yeah. you know, I, yeah. the thing I learn as I get older, the entire world is in a perpetual state of growing pains. You know, make America great again. It's like, when was it great exactly? You know, you look at America and its history and it's like, there was always these weird issues, these really big issues, you know? Yeah. You go from slavery to the black day of the stock market. I forgot, is that what it's called? I think the, it's called the black day. It was It was like when the stock, the, the first stock market crashed. Oh, like the, was, what caused the Great Depression. The great, exactly, there was so yeah. much poverty at the time. And then once we got out of that, we're dealing with Hitler. And after Hitler, we're dealing with like, you know, just like one thing after another. And then we're in Afghanistan in the 2000s. And it's like Obama said, we're gonna get out and then we don't get out. We're always dealing with some kind of thing. And we're always like, ah, trying to choke each other out. And it made me realize that we are just in a perpetual state of growing pains. Because I look at India and I think about these things and I'm like, oh, like all this stuff, it's all very recent, some of these problems that are still like, some of these arguments are still ongoing. And it's so strange to me. Like the conflict between Pakistan and India is because of the British rule. The Brits left almost a hundred years ago. Yeah. We're coming up on that. I mean, it's like in another- 70, 70 plus, yeah. If you round up, it's yeah. almost a century ago. Right. And it's just interesting to me that we still have this ongoing, very, very big conflict between those neighboring countries because of the Brits, essentially. So we're just like constantly dealing with these growing pains. It's, weird. it's so strange to me. I guess if you study history, you know that anyway. But to me, it's like a new revelation as I, as I get older. I'm like, oh, that's just what we do as people. You know, when you're a kid, you can't appreciate what you have as a kid until you are no longer a kid and you're like, oh shit, I wish I was a kid again. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just constantly dealing with a new thing. So anyway. Uh, I could go off onto that philosophically for yeah. hours. We're all just trying to grow and we're all just figuring it out. The big lesson, the big takeaway is just appreciate what you have in front of you right now as much as you can. Yeah. Because you don't know when it's going to go. You don't know how long you'll have the people in your lives. You don't know how long, how long anything will last. Wow, you this know? took a turn, but yeah. So, I'm just saying. <laughs> we're watching a movie, a movie, a video about who are the Tamil people and then you're offering some like life truth bombs. Like love love the people around you let them know it yeah i mean i know it sounds hippy dippy but like peace and love like you see the conflict that came out of this and the fact of the matter is people were divided and that's why the british were able to come in and just seize this opportunity and wreak havoc because right. if it was already a united country the british wouldn't have stand, stood a chance i think it's tough because the british had guns that's a difficult thing because it, it gives you so much of an advantage if it's not an even playing field i think if indians maybe had equal firepower mm. yeah for sure i don't know i'm I'm not sure like what was available I'm, in yeah, India I'm, I'm, at that time. I'm just a dude speaking out of ignorance, so just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Me too. I don't know what I'm um, talking about, sir. But the sentiment, the underlying sentiment is, I wish that hadn't happened. Here's the weird thing. English was brought to India by the British, right? So you guys who are watching this are able to watch and appreciate this because of your history. 
Yeah, that's kind of trippy. To take this back to America again, because I always got to do that. Columbus Day was like, it's a holiday here, right? Yeah. I don't even know if it's still a holiday, but they wanted to change it to the Indigenous Peoples Day. What happened was you were seeing this these ads pop up on TV of people going, we shouldn't celebrate Col Columbus Day. He basically started slavery, et cetera, et cetera. The weird thing is the people who are in this ad would not exist if history was any different. Who are the people in the ads? Minorities, people of color. So you're saying they wouldn't be in America if not for slavery? I'm saying irrespective of however, whatever, like they just wouldn't exist because it's a butterfly effect. Sure. That's all I'm saying. With the, you know, the British invasion into India and blah, blah, blah. It's like everyone who's watching this video right now probably wouldn't exist if not for the British invasion. That's what trips me out. Or you, we, you would exist, but we wouldn't be able to understand each other. And we wouldn't be talking to each other like we no, are now. No, they would. You wouldn't exist. It'd be a completely different set of people because of the butterfly effect. Oh. If your parents mated at five minutes later than they did, you wouldn't be you. You'd be someone totally different. Stop trying to give me an existential crisis. You right know what now. I'm saying? You get what I'm saying yet? Okay. Yes. I'm just saying. <laughs> you gotta take it and make it weird, Jabby. I'm just trying to find the silver lining here because this was a really dark video. At you, points, like, yeah. At, at certain points, oh, 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 it was pretty dark. I mean, yeah. overall, it was like, while it was very enlightening, it was also quite dark. It, like, it got really dark. And that's what's staying with me. It's just how fucked up that is. And I'm going, okay. But, but I've made some friends in India and I'm like, what, those people probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for this history because the events would have transpired completely different. All of their parents would have made it at different times, making different children that then in turn made different children. Yeah, or it's just like, what is it? String theory or alternate universes where it's just different uses. I don't know. Yeah. I'm getting too cerebral. Yeah, you are. Let's stop. Peace out.